cops mishandled DNA of a potential serial killer. Put up the picture full of masks. Um, this is a story full of twists and turns. So per Austin America statesman, Austin police have closed an internal investigation into missteps about the handling of a DNA report. They say linked accused serial killer Raul Meza to a woman's 2019 slaying, a lapse that might have allowed Meza to strike again. So in a statement to the American statesman, the Austin Police Department acknowledged for the first time a detective investigating the 2019 death of 65-year-old Gloria Lofton received forensic information that Meza was at the scene of, Lof of Lofton's death and did not follow up. The department said in an unsigned email, quote, at the time the information was received, the detective was working on a special assignment related to the protest of 2020. They blame it on the protest of 2020. With millions watching and many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable, we just need 1% of the viewers to become a paid member so we can continue to bring this content to you. Now back to the show. Authorities also, I think Mesa pictured, carried out at least one additional slaying, that of 80-year-old Jesse Fraga, not pictured here. Um, and uh, that was three years later. When Fraga's body had been found in 2023, detectives said they were investigating Mesa for crimes dating back to the 1970s. And Mesa was deemed, quote, the worst of the worst, end quote. Police think Mesa killed Fraga, a retired probation officer who had befriended him and stole his truck. They discovered the body in the bathroom of his, of his home after a concerned family member posed a question to officers, hey, I need you to check on the welfare of this individual. The statesman also reported last year that investigators searched for a woman in a field near uh, near Pflugerville, where they think Mesa may have buried a victim back in March of 2022. They found no human remains. Police also said last year that they are investigating possible links between Mesa and up to 10 unsolved homicides, but currently have no updates on those investigations. Now, let me give you the background. Mesa was convicted in 1982 murder of murder of an eight-year-old Kendra Page in a case that shocked Austin, but he was released on parole in the early 1990s. The statesman reports that an arrest affidavit charging Mesa with murder and Lofton's death said May 1st, 2020, um, the Texas Department of Public Safety Capital Area Regional Crime Lab told Austin police it received a database match with Mesa and DNA at the scene of the crime. The affidavit said Mesa told police that he had killed a woman on Sara Boulevard in East Austin. He also told them they had misidentified the death, which was a homicide. Sonia Houston, Lofton's daughter, said she believes police did not take her mother's death seriously. And it's heartbroken they did not immediately follow the DNA lead in 2020. The Austin police statement said officials close a closed, excuse me, the investigation, the internal investigation, without any discipline against the detective because they learned about the lapse after a 180-day deadline to impose punishment, a technicality. Because the case did not result in discipline against the investigator, the department said state civil service law prevents them from identifying who the negligent detective was that likely led to the death of another human being in recent months. After another high profile incident in the Dallas area in which police did not act on forensics, the legislature adopted a new law to prevent similar oversight in the future. A measure that went into effect in September created a new requirement that crime labs must notify law enforcement agency within 30 days when they obtain a match from DNA or other forensic evidence. Then the police agency must verify with the lab that it received information within five business days 30 days after that, police must also demonstrate that they have attempted to follow the lead, including 
attempts to get new DNA sample from the suspect. So all of these rules and regulations, that even seems quite ironic to me. Um, so if you find DNA that matches the DNA and the profile of a known killer, um, I don't know why you have to wait 30 days by way of legislative mandate to tell somebody. Uh, that to me seems antithetical to progress and justice. But look at what happened here. You literally have a police department signing an office policy as to why the detective should not be held accountable for screwing up an investigation so bad it may have, may have led to the death of at least one additional person, maybe more. Well, we can't do anything. It's outside of the policy, the office policy of 180 days. That's insane. But you're supposed to uphold justice. This is the reason why people don't like the police. Because on one hand, you're enforcing a rule that you yourself refuse to come under. It's called the rule of law, the rule of order, the rule of process and protocol. All of those things apply except to the police. If a person is speeding, you get pulled over by the police. The police approaches your vehicle as if you just committed the worst crime in the world. Where are you going? Why are you driving so fast? Where's your license and insurance? It becomes an interrogation immediately. But then when the police do something so negligent, it leads to an actual cause and effect where a person is now dead. All of a sudden, oh, let's cite these office administrative policies to protect our own. You are not there to protect the blue, you're there to protect the community. This is different. All right, Trey, thoughts here? Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> it's what you think sometimes you watch, like, uh, you hear about all the advances in like forensics technology and DNA testing, all the crazy things they can do now when it comes to like investigating murders and crimes. And sometimes you think, like, man, how does anybody get away with anything anymore? This stuff is incredible. And then you hear a story like this, you're like, oh, right, because of how cops are a lot of time. That's okay. how people get away with, you know, human error. That's how it happened, or human negligence, or whatever the case may be. They're also just, like you were saying, citing these office policies, doing anything. They're like so intensely averse to taking any kind of responsibility or accountability ever for anything. It's also earlier on in the story, you pointed out that they like tried to imply that the reason they they didn't catch this was because people were protesting. <laughs> the Black Lives Matter protests were happening. Yep. And it's like they find DNA at a crime scene uh, from a known and convicted child murderer, right? And evidently, they're like, ah, that's probably nothing. You know what's really important? We need to focus on these uh, BM, BLM protests that are going on downtown. I mean, think of the property damage, you know, who cares right. about potential murders? I mean, that's what you're saying. They're supposed to serve mm -hmm. the community, but I'm pretty sure the Supreme Court is like, has ruled before that they don't have any real obligation to help people. The, the whole yeah. protect and serve thing is just something they say. Really, it, you know, they're there to protect Property and money and capital and that type of thing is what they yeah. really. And I You're feel right. like you watch their you see their priorities in in this scenario between like the protest versus murder case. It you know and how it shook out. You can you can see that being being the truth. You know, yeah. so it's all very typical. See, yep, you see what their priorities are, especially when they come up with a lame ass excuse like that. Oh, well, it's because the detective uh, was working a case dealing with protesters. Right. Insane.